Crown and the Bridge, Lecture 13, Grade 5. Resin bonded fixed partial denture. One of the disadvantages of conventional fixed partial dentures is the destruction of tooth structure required for abutment preparations upon which the retainer will be placed. The patient usually asks, is it really necessary to cut away all that good tooth? This is a question trouble dentists in prescribing the replacement of a missing tooth. So, some dentists have tried to minimize the problem by eliminating one of the abutment teeth and fabricating cantilever fixed partial dentures. While this type of restoration does have its place in carefully selected situation, it is discriminate using can result in failures that are costly both in money spent and subsequent replacement and in loss of predental support around previously sound teeth. Others have tried to use unilateral removable partial denture to avoid undesirable destruction of tooth structure. But this usually wanting in both retention and stability and may present the risk of aspiration if they become dislodged. So the development of acid etching of enamel to improve the retention of resin has proven to be a mean of attaching fixed partial denture to teeth by less destructive means. First trial was consist of attaching acrylic resin pontic to an unprepared tooth using a composite ponding resin as intermediate replacement of a missing tooth. Then they introduced the metal framework. The addition of this metal framework which is the wings or retainers, extending onto the abutment teeth was a logical progression in the development of the restoration. They are classified into Rochette Bridge, Maryland Bridge, Cast Mesh Fixed Partial Denture, Virginia Bridge, and Adhesive Bridge. The first one, which is the Rochette Bridge, that is used first in 1973 consists of a wing like retainer. This is the wing like retainer. Attached to the pontic with funnel shaped perforation. These are the funnel shaped perforation through the wing to enhance resin retention, which is the mechanical retention in addition to the application of silane coupling agent to produce adhesion to the metal. This type used for anterior and posterior teeth. The next type, which is the Maryland Bridge. The researchers postulated that the retention resin, extrude, retentive resin, extruding through the perforated framework in the first type, the Rochette one, were exposed to increased stresses as well as abrasion and leakage that diminish their longevity. So, they introduced this one that not perforated or the perforation free. Retention to this type will be by producing micro spaces in the internal surface of the wing, these wings, through various ways, such as electrochemical pit corroding technique, which is we called the metal etching. After that, was introduced the cast mesh, cast mesh fixed partial denture. Here, they use non-etching method to produce metal surface roughness before the alloy is cast. So they use a net like nylon mesh, this one, placed over the lingual surface of the abutment, then covered by and incorporated into the retainer wax pattern. This is the wax pattern. That will become a mesh-like when the retainer is cast. 
So this is the replacement tooth and this is the mesh like after casting. This is the design and this is the mesh. The other type is the Virginia type or Virginia bridge produced by particle roughening retainer by incorporating salt crystal into the retainer pattern to produce roughness on the inner surface. This method is known as the lost salt technique for producing Virginia bridges. The framework is first outlined on the die with a pencil and the egg to be bonded is coated first with model spray then with lubricant then adding salty crystal sodium chloride. Its size ranging from 149 to 250 micrometer that's sprinkled over the outlined area. The retainer patterns are fabricated from resin, leaving 0.5 to 1 mm wide, crystal free margin around the outlined area. When the resin has polymerized, the patterns are removed from the cast, cleaned with solvent, and then placed in water with an ultrasonic cleaner to dissolve the salt crystal. This leaves cubic voids in the surface that are produced in the cast retainer, producing retention for the fixed partial denture. The other type is the adhesive bridge. In this design, there is no need to make any surface modification before casting. After casting, we clean the surface with air abrasion, then prepare the retainer in our surface for adhesion by various methods such as tinnyplating, which carries intraorally. The bond in this design depends on the inherent bondability of the newer resin cement to the alloy. Now, what are the advantages of resin bonded fixed partial denture? First, reduce costs and shear time by as much as 50%. Second, conservative. Minimum tooth structure need to be removed. The preparation here confined to the enamel air. Third, no need for anesthesia because our preparation will be only on the enamel so it's more comfortable for the patient. Fourth, supragingival margin will be performed. Fifth, the restoration can be rebonded. So, what are the disadvantages of resin bonded fixed partial dentures? First, uncertain longevity. Longevity of the prosthesis is less than that for conventional prosthesis. Second, it is an irreversible tie. Third, we cannot make here any space correction. In case of the edentulous space, it's wider than the major distal width of the tooth that normally occupy the spaces. Fourth, we cannot make any alignment correction. Good alignment of the abutment teeth is required here because the prosthesis path of insertion is limited by enamel thickness. And also, it is difficult to be temp temporization. So what are the indications for this type of a bridge? First, in mandibular incisor replacement. It is a treatment of choice for replacing one or two missing mandibular incisor when the abutment teeth are undamaged. Second, maxillary incisor replacement. Third, in case of predental splinting, we can use this type. Fourth, in single posterior teeth replacement. So what are the contraindications? In case of extensive caries, that means Less amount of enamel is left on the tooth structure. Second, in case of deep vertical overbite. In such case, enamel must be removed from the lingual surface of the maxillary incisor from the occlusal relationship. The retention would be drastically reduced because, the poor, because of the poor bonding strength afforded by the exposed dentin. So, tooth preparation. How we prepare the tooth? That includes the axial reduction and the guide plane on the proximal surfaces with a slight extension on the facial surface to make a facial lingual look. 
So, my preparation should encompass at least, at least 180 degrees of the tooth to enhance retention. The preparation must extend as far as possible to provide maximum bonding with finishing line, which is chamfer one, light chamfer one, that is placed about one millimeter supragingival. With a clearance of about 5.5 millimeter is needed on the maxillary incisor. And the thickness of the enamel that should be left on the lingual surface is listed here in this table. As we see, in the central incisor, one millimeter from the cemento enamel junction should be left 0.3. 2 mm from the cemento enamel junction, 0.5. 3 mm from the cemento enamel junction should be left 0.6. 4 mm should be left 0.7. 5 mm from the cemento enamel junction, 0.7. And so on for other teeth, lateral incisor and canine. So, let's see the preparation sequence that will, will be made on the maxillary incisor. First, the central occlusion should be marked with guiding sheet or the articulating paper. These are the marks. Then, these marks should be removed with wheel shape bare to about 0.5 mm and act as a guide for the entire palatal surface reduction with the same bare leaving 1.5 to 2 mm from the incisal edge. Then by using a flat end tapered fissure bare used to prepare flat notches or countersink on the lingual surface of the tooth to provide resistance to gingival displacement. Then, making a small plane that extends slightly facial to the facial proximal line angle. Another plane should be produced lingual to the first one by using the same bear. Lingual upright, ling uh, uh, lingual upright and the axial reduction is done from by planar, by planar proximal reduction around the cingulum here to a point just short to the proximal contact on the opposite side of the edentulous space. Short groove is placed at the facial most extension on the opposite side of the cingulum with a short needle diamond bear. The same diamond bear used in the first one used to place a groove in the finicity of the brick between the facial and lingual plane of the proximal axial reduction adjusted to the edentulous space. Thanks for listening.